Oh man, how how is Austin today? Uh, Brett, thanks for having me. Austin is fantastic, hot as heck, but uh, great market. Been here for 24 years and love it here. 24 years, awesome. And you've probably seen some major changes down there. Is that um, kind of where you started in your journey in real estate investing? Yeah, I graduated from the University of Texas in, oh, well, went there in 2000, graduated in 04, and I've been in commercial real estate ever since. Nice, nice. So that sounds like a little bit of a jump start of your background and who Ben is uh, with Rooster Equity. Tell us a little bit more about just a, a summary of, of your professional background. Yeah, uh, after graduating college, uh, found some mentors who were selling big, brokering big shopping centers, triple net investment properties. And that's where I cut my teeth. Uh, we sold uh, countless numbers of shopping centers around Central Texas. And uh, then uh, went to get my MBA in 2010, 11, and uh, then got back into commercial real estate. And you know, wearing the uh, the uh, the hat as investor slash developer slash um, you know, pretty much anything I could do in the commercial real estate space. So that's really what I've been focused on, and what I'm passionate about. So these shopping centers, then um, in this triple net lease world. Uh, what is that? What does triple net lease mean to you for our listeners? So the definition for those that aren't familiar is triple net, the net, net, net of the taxes, insurance, and the maintenance costs. Are the, those are expenses, real expenses that are passed through to the tenant. So the tenant is responsible for paying the landlord their base rent. And then they also cover those other expenses. So from a landlord's perspective, we love it because you know, as taxes have gone up, obviously for year over year over year, especially here in Central Texas, um, it's not as much of a concern for us as a landlord because it's not our responsibility; it's the tenant's responsibility. And so, it really helps us um, predict the cash flow and uh, all all the other components of what's important in commercial real estate. And uh, that's one of the things that I love about it. So, taxes, insurance, and maintenance, and that maintenance piece, Ben, is what what i see all the time is called tie cam well the maintenance is the cam part right the common area maintenance so when Correct. we talk about maintenance being covered in a building and a lot of our listeners are physicians um, maybe in that triple net situation themselves or owning properties and renting them out in that way when we talk about common area maintenance what maintenance typically falls on the building owner then when we speak about common area maintenance or the maintenance of the building tell us a little bit about your experience with that so it's a it's an it depends moment so it depends on the lease but in a medical uh perspective oftentimes let's just you know assume that it's a multi-tenant medical facility there's going to be landscaping needs there's going to be a parking lot needs there's going to be common area trash and water and all the things when windows break and roof leaks and lights on the parking lot and all those other things need to be maintained and so the landlord will typically so we hire a third party management to maintain it and then at the end of the year we will reconcile those expenses and every tenant dependent on their percentage of uh, occupancy in that particular project will be responsible for their percentage of the camp generally speaking what about the the structure itself if we say common area maintenance what all happens um, when it comes to like maintenance of the roof and the the maybe the framing piece of of the building is that is that the tenant or is that the the landlord so if it's if it's a let's say it's a single tenant building Lots of times it'll be a triple net lease and they uh, lease will carve out that the roof of the structure becomes the responsibility of the landlord and also the foundation. So, but also there are leases that we've, um, we've purchased where it's an absolute triple net, where no matter what the expenses, roof, foundation, anything, it doesn't matter to us as the landlord, it's the tenant's responsibility. So it really, uh, it depends on that situation. How does that look for you and your experience with uh, physicians or dentists that, uh, you know, want to be a real estate investor and want to expand their practice? Okay, so great question. I've, I've worn this hat on every side of this equation. 
Uh, my dad happened to be a dentist, so I grew up around the space. Um, I have many, many dentists who um, want to just be a passive investor, so they can just invest in the project and we handle everything. And let me share with you another formula that we've done many times where, to your point, this um, we're going to use a uh, urgent care as an example. They wanted to expand. And so what we did is we partnered with the urgent care and they would point out to a, um, well, we would together, we'd find out a location where they wanted to go. And so then we would put the uh, project under contract and then we would come in and we would buy the real estate and we would fund their, um, their tenant improvement. So maybe they need to renovate it, paint it, you know, maybe they need some working capital and we basically bundle all that cash together. So I'll just give you an example. Let's say it's a million and a half dollar building. Okay. And they need, uh, they need to buy the, they want to own the, occupy the building, but they also need, let's say I'll make up a number, a million dollars for equipment and working capital and marketing and so on and so forth. Um, or maybe even they need that money to buy the practice that's in that particular facility to help them expand. And so now we're into this building for two and a half million. So now the tenant, the doctor will sign a lease with us and they can either participate on the LP, they can be a partner in the project, or they can just be a tenant. It's up to them. And um, they could come in and sign, usually it's about a 15 to 20 year triple net lease at a pre-negotiated uh, cap rate. So they're gonna basically be, it's, it's, a, it's a creative way to finance uh, the expansion for these medical facilities. How did you get into the medical world then from the shopping piece into the medical world? Is that related to your father being a dentist? No, it's just that a lot of medical space, you know, it used to be back in the day that medical space was primarily in medical offices, which we do also invest in medical office buildings. But um, what you see now is a lot of medical groups that are occupying retail space. You know, shopping centers, you know, people said, oh, sh you know, retail is dead, Amazon and this and that. And it's like, no, retail is not dead. You can drive around in the Carolinas or really anywhere in the United States and you're going to see that retail space, you know, and here in Austin, it's 97% occupied. How do you handle the that recapitalization of, of the real estate? Does it go into an escrow and then they make draw requests? uh similar to like a renovation or how do you how do you mitigate the risk in that process so it's as simple as um we close on the real estate that's our money that doesn't go to the tenant that goes to the, the previous owner of the real estate so they go away and then because we had already negotiated and signed a lease extension um our agreement is very clear we pay them cash they sign a new lease and once that happens then we're you know that's how it happens. We wire them the money and that's it. So it's, there's no uh, like hand holding in that they're actually investing in the real estate. This is not a scenario where the tenant is an investor in the real estate. They're just, they're no, just no, not I mean, a tenant. The repairs themselves. So if, so if you're recapitalizing the real estate and you're saying that, Hey, I'm going to, you know, put 50, 80, hundred thousand into floors, walls, equipment, whatever it may be that there's no follow through on that for you as a building owner for them to do that. No, we don't, we don't even care. Yeah. We're giving them, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They can, you know, use 10,000 of it to fix the floors and they can keep 190 of it in their bank. And they have, uh, you know, 15, 14, 15 more years of lease. They're going to need that money to make repairs along the way. And now that we're an absolute triple net lease, we don't care as a landlord, it's not our responsibility. And they have, they've gotten their money and, and they can use it either now or later, it doesn't matter to us. How are you mitigating your risk by looking at that business to see if it's going to withstand that additional expense? Great question. So that that's probably one of the most important questions that I like to dig into is, what is the, abil the tenant's ability to be able to pay this rent? Can they afford this rent? Uh, and so to do that, we look at the unit economics, the basic fundamentals of the financials of the tenant. And so if it's a mom and pop medical tenant, we like to see like if it's a dentist as an example, 
looking at their financials. Can they afford this rent? How does it compare to what their rent was before? Um, and we're going to try to keep it uh, minimal. So like somewhere between five and 10% um, rent bump. Um, and then the example I've been talking about is, was a national group. So it was a uh, backed by a multi-billion dollar private equity group. And so when we have that, and, and look, there's no guarantees that even a billion you know, dollar companies don't go belly up. But we dug into it and we, you know, there, there's a lot of information about these uh, guarantors. And so we were able to be confident that uh, this tenant can handle the, the lease guarantee.